the Klingon says, what is field, Sam? And yeah, please point to it. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, good old Sam's got to, you know, put his finger out there and, uh, and point to the field, right? That's, that's the way it's done. So hopefully uh, everybody can do it in the same way. I mean, am I asking for something out of the ordinary? You say that field is a thing, you're going to vibrate it, you're going to move it, you're going to say that the field moves a charge, whatever that is, another number, you know, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, okay, just a number, a value. Okay, so you have a field, and you're saying it's a physical object, you're saying it's a thing, it's a uh, substance, all it is really a region of numbers, but if you say that it's an object, point to it. Show me completely without anything else in the in the, in, the, in you know near it. It can't be a dependent object. It's got to be a standalone object. That's what a, we don't specify that because it's understood. Okay, so uh, here's uh, one fellow and uh, he defines it as such. He says in physics, field is just a quantity. Quantity. What is a quantity? It's a number that is represented by a tensor for all points in space. Okay, what is he saying? He's saying there's a region and it's got a whole bunch of numbers which represent uh, some value, you know, of uh, could be temperature, could be gravity, could be magnetism, strengths of certain, certain parameter. That's all it is. So if you think of it in terms of, say, temperature, which is a scalar or a rank zero tensor, then you have all points in space which have some value for temperature, and we could, would call that temperature field. Okay, so we have a temperature field. Okay, so what is he talking about? A bunch of numbers in a region. What are those numbers? They represent, you know, the strengths or how hot something is or whatever. We also have the electromagnetic field, which is a vector quantity, and it has a value for all points in space. What is a field? A value for all points in space. Please memorize that, all those people who think it's a physical object. No, it's not. It's a region of values, of mathematical values. It's got nothing to do with physics or with science. It's got to do with measuring and saying the, the value here is such and the value there is such. That's all it is. This is just an abstract what? Concept. Is field an object? Is it a thing? No, it's an abstract concept that we use to describe things. Not to explain, but to describe, right? And what are the lines of force, you know, in the case of magnetism? Lines of force are what? Not a thing. Uh-huh. They don't exist, okay? They are useful visualizations uh, tool and useful for drawing diagrams or teaching non-specialists about how the force threw out a space, kind of how it all fits together. But really, there are no such thing as lines of force. It turns out that it's the other way around. Field is a concept. The line of force is a thing that's moving inside the region people call field. Okay? And here we have the two gurus, Mr. Faraday and Mr. Fa Maxwell, and they have said it many times, but people never read them. I cannot conceive curved lines of force without the condition of a physical existence in that intermediate space, Mr. Faraday said. And what is he saying? He's saying the, those lines of force are things. Those are physical things. That's the thing, not the field. And then we have um, Maxwell says, feel the space in the neighborhood of the electric and magnetic bodies. In that space, there is matter in motion. Matter in motion. What is a line of force? It's matter in motion. Okay? So for people to say that a line of force is the concept and field is the object, they got it exactly in reverse. Uh, the line of force is what you have to identify. That's the thing. That's the that's the physical thing that's moving in there. And what is the threads? So under threads, we got it done. We, we we can tell you what a what a line of force is. It's a thread that's moving inside there. It's moving right through the iron filings. And I showed that the other day how it picks up all these iron filings in water. You know, put the magnet in water, it picks up one at a time. You can see it in slow motion how all the iron filings slowly, gradually go towards the magnet. So why are they going towards the magnet? What's drawing them there? Well, it's because you have this skip rope. You know, it's moving around at great speeds and picking up all these iron filings that sense that skip rope and pulling them towards the magnet. That's what it is. So the iron filings uh, understand what a, uh, what a line of force is. Uh, humans don't. <laughs> okay, so here we have a field. Okay, want to know what a field looks like? Here, I'll give it to you right there. Okay, standalone field. There's a field with a, uh, around a magnet. Now let's remove the magnet. Is that what a field is? That's what a standalone field is? A bunch of arrows, curved arrows? What are we staring at? What are those curved arrows, if not lines of force? 
And people say, you know, the, there's no field without a magnet. Well, why? <laughs> uh, what, what are we staring at? What are those lines of force? And this is the problem. People never go through there and, uh, and look at these issues. Yeah, the, the lines of force are real. Those are physical objects. As Mr. Maxwell said, it's matter in motion. And here you have a uh, gravitational field. Yeah, the gravitational field around the Earth, the way they portray it. And there's the gravitational field without the Earth. <laughs> okay, so what are those engine arrows? We, we see lots of engine arrows uh, these days, and nobody explains what those engine arrows are. You know, why, why, what are, what is that field? What is it made of? What's moving in there? Well, what's drawing you to the center of the Earth? What's drawing an astronaut to the center of the Earth or the uh, asteroids or the um, uh, satellites? What's pulling on them? That's the question you got to answer. And you say, what's the field? Well, the field is a concept. You can't say the field pulled them because the field is just a region of values. It just tells you how strong the field is at that point. So you can't use the word field in science. Not to give an explanation, that's what science is about, rational explanation. So the word field has no place in science. Okay, you gotta tell me what physical object is pulling. When, 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 when you're pulling on a donkey, you know, you, you tie a rope around the donkey's neck and you're pulling on the donkey. Everybody understands it. You don't need to go to college and learn what the force is, how much energy, you don't need to know about values, you don't need to know about mass or anything like that. You don't need numbers or units. You, you ask a pygmy in the, in the middle of Africa, you know, Aborigine or whatever, and say, how do you pull on a horse? And he says, well, this is the way I do it. You tie a rope, pull. Did he go to college to learn that? No, he just did it by practice. He said, this is how you pull. Okay, and uh, how do you produce pull without an, without an elongated object? And these people say it's the field. <laughs> the lines of force that don't exist, you know. No, you can't pull on a horse unless you put it in, pull, uh, uh, place a, uh, an elongated object between your hands and the horse's neck. Then you can't, you can't pull on it. And people don't understand simple, simple things like that. They, they say, no, no, it's the force, it's the energy, it's the mass. You can't pull with mass, you can't pull with gravity because it's a concept. You can't say the temperature did it. You need a physical object. You got to put a stone. You got to put a tree. You got to put a house, a dog, whatever. Something between your hand and the and the uh, donkey to show how you pull on it. And the same thing with with us. You know, if you're if you're falling down to earth and you say, well, I jump and then I'm being pulled downwards or I fall downwards. Why do I fall downwards? Why don't I keep just going to the moon? Something is drawing upon me. Something is tugging me towards the earth. And you say, well, there's nothing because I don't see anything. I can't touch anything. Well, you got the wrong definition of something. That's the first one, you know. But then the question is, you know, if you don't put something in there, then you're doing black magic. You're doing action at a distance. You're doing remote control. You're doing what? Witchcraft. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. You're doing a bunch of witchcraft when you do that. Now, you know, you can go in there and, uh, and use angels. You say, well, you know, I don't believe in angels. Well, I don't care if you do. This guy has a theory and he says, look, I think it's all done by angels, by spirits, ghosts, whatever. And so when they want to pull, you know, they hold hands and they pull on each other. And they're stuck to whatever object they are, so the objects come together. And when the objects push each other away, you know, they push, they play patty cake, you know, and they push each other away. No problem. You understand the mechanism. Oh, but you say, but I don't believe in angels. Well, <laughs> You don't have to believe in the theory. You just want to understand what the guy, what's going through the guy's head. You don't have to believe it. He's just trying to get you to understand what, what he's proposing. And people uh, harp on belief and proof and evidence when that's got nothing to do with, with science, with physics. And you say, well, well, does putting angels in there have to do with physics and science? Well, uh, it's a little more rational space-time or field or mass or energy. Because at least the guy's putting an object there and says, look, this is the mechanism that I propose. You don't have to believe in angels. You don't have to accept his theory either. But at least it's a little more rational than what you see out there. Now, these people are putting concepts in there, treating them as objects and saying, oh, it's the field that pulled the two objects together, the gravitational field or the magnetic field. What is that? That's, that's even worse than uh, black magic. Because now you're putting a, uh, a concept and reifying it, turning it into a physical object. Okay, so yeah, angels are superior to what we see out there today.
Uh, doesn't mean you have to believe in angels, but uh, give them a little more credit than what we see out there today.